Don't worry guys, we're going to get straight to the Warhammer Community article, but first this was dropped on Twitter. Not a leak this time, just an actual post that they haven't rescinded and retracted. So let's take a quick look at the blood letter. First thing to note up here, oh I can't point at it can I? Note that it is a blood letter brackets fighter, not a blood letter brackets warrior. So we can assume that something in this is better than it would be in a regular or perhaps it being a fighter just means that if you look at the bottom right corner here uh perhaps it just allows you to take the specialism with blood letters we don't know anyway let's take a quick look at the stats movement is three white as usual apl is two ga is one now i feel like the blood letters are a little bit of a swarm perhaps it's only the blood letter fighter that is ga1 whereas the others can be ga2 don't know anyway uh, defense three that's normal by now save is a six the save it sucks quite a bit but that's expected the save is six in 40k as well and it's the five up invuln that they always fall on to not the six up standard save nine wounds that's cool this is the first character that we've seen that's kind or the first model in general that isn't uh standard guardsman or astartes so we are seeing a little bit of that granularity we believe that the orcs coming out are going to be 10 but we haven't seen them yet so we don't know then we have a quick look at the hellblade this is the standard now in 40k the hellblade is really strong it's like ap minus three um and if you crit it's multiple damage it's a really good astartes killer so let's take a look so, oh and don't forget this is a fighter not a warrior so presumably something here is better than it would be in in the standard data sheet my guess would be the ballistic skill the weapon skill i reckon this guy is stronger so hitting on threes instead of fours which would be normal pure speculation so the hellblade is attack four weapon skill ballistic skill uh three plus three plus damage four six that's a really good damage this is essentially a power weapon but it also has lethal five up which means critical fives instead of sixes and we do see demon this operative has a five up invuln save we've essentially had it confirmed what an invuln save does now top of my head i'm probably going to say it incorrectly but just just know that hey if you're in my discord we know what a five how an invuln save works if i actually sit down and figure it out so that i can say it fluently at some point i'll do that if you just want to know check out my discord i also have a facebook and a patreon and it, let's get on with the warhammer community article Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, and today we are looking at something quite interesting for Warhammer Community. It's about how to select operatives and objectives on the fly. Now, I was considering reading this and summarizing it for you, but there's so many words, I'm just going to have to read it through for you, and then we'll have a little chat at the end. But as always, before we jump into it, if you are a subscriber to my channel, I would like to give you a big double hello. Very wholesome. If you would like some of that wholesomeness in your life in the next video, like subscribe leave a comment right now let's get on to it select objectives and operatives i'm gonna sneeze select objectives and operatives on the fly to outwit your opponent in kill team's new matched play missions now i would like you know what they're about to say it they're about to say it and i'll mention it then okay kill team octarius we recently looked at how to put together a kill team using the finely balanced points free system and examine the forces you can choose from in the upcoming kill team compendium now you've got your team of specialists at the ready it's time to dig into the missions they'll be embarking on in match play games in the new edition of kill team so i just really quickly want to touch on this a lot of people out there might be concerned about what the new game is actually going to play like and i just want to think back to everything they've said they've said it's a streamlined version of the game but they haven't said it's a fast game. They haven't said it's an easy game. So far, the main thing is they're saying are that it's streamlined and that it's balanced. And to go on top of that, before they tell us anything about the narrative games and the campaigns, they're first giving us match play. I'm not, so I don't know, but like I'm saying, think about the things they're saying. Finally balanced. They keep saying finally balanced. Yes, it's fun to meme at, but they are telling us what this game is focused on they've told us balanced and streamlined they haven't said easy they haven't said fast they've said it is a tactical skirmish game personally i'm quite curious to see how long a game takes to play anyway let's keep going oh sorry 
let's look at this picture. So I believe, you know, since we've seen a little bit about how uh, a list is put together, I believe that these pictures are actually accurate. And we need to pay more attention. If you recall, two custodies, five sisters of silence. That's a kill team. How many of these? Oh, and then it was three death guard and eight pox walkers. So what does this tell us? Okay, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven neophytes. One with a, uh, we see one with a heavy stubber. He's a heavy and one with a uh, flamer. Seven neophytes, two gunners. And then we see one, two, three, four uh, acolyte fighters. One of which seems to have a banner. One of which presumably is a leader. Uh, and one of which has a heavy weapon. I'm just saying, pay attention to these. If, if you have your faction turning up in some of these pictures, pay attention to them. Only three guardians? That doesn't seem right because we know it's four Dire Avengers and Guardians have to be worse than Dire Avengers. Match play is a game mode that focuses on providing the most mechanically balanced games possible, ensuring that you and your opponent have a level playing field to test your strategic noose against each other. The strategic decisions begin before the models even hit the tabletop, so you'll need to bring your A game to emerge victorious on the battlefields of Kill Team. The core of the match play experience is the mission you'll be undertaking. There are nine to choose from in the Kill Team core book's critical operations mission pack. I don't know what that means. Uh, it says it, in the Kill Team Core Book's Critical Operations Mission Pack. Presumably, Critical Operations is the new name for match play, possibly. Uh, and each one provides special actions and mission objectives that can dramatically alter your plan of action. For example, in Consecrated Ground Missions, you can turn up, uh, sorry, you can power up operatives that place themselves in harm's way by controlling objectives at the end of each turn or turning point. Do note that, that's the first time they've said turning point. Because we aren't playing in a, a standard, you know, you go, I go game, and instead we're doing alternating a activations, we, it, it's hard to kind of narrow down whose turn is it. The turning point is going to be the change for who activates first, presumably, but also there will be certain skills that activate depending on who is the, the primary player for that turn. We call that the turning point is my guess, to be clear, I, I don't know yet. Uh, little concern, I suppose, is am I going to have to learn new objectives and actions for every mission? That seems a bit scary. Let's go. So consecrate ground one AP. An operative can perform this action while within circle of a non-consecrated objective marker it controls. That's two inches. And do note the circle is white. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Uh, an operative can perform this action while within white of a non-consecrated objective marker it controls. Until the start of the next turning point, that objective marker is consecrated, and that operative's APL and defense characteristics and the attack characteristics of its melee weapons are increased by one. Oh, interesting. Okay. So you consecrate the ground, which is, from the looks of it, doing something that's going to score you points, and then that makes you stronger in every way. Makes you harder to kill, makes you tougher, uh, like more hitty in close combat. Uh, a mission objective, at the end of each turning point for each consecrated objective marker, friendly operatives control, you score one VP to a maximum of four VPs per player per turning point. So obviously that's going to depend how many objectives are on the board as to how we would expect, like how much we can score this. Let's assume that six is still kind of the max, right? I can't imagine them giving us over six objectives in a match play mission. So this is starting to tell us a little bit about how the game will actually play. Don't get me wrong, knowing you have to know all the core rules before you know how the game plays. You have to know what objectives are. You're not just there kill to kill things. You have to know the point. Now obviously we've seen in 40k and previous kill team, it's all about objective play. But here, and guys, the important thing here is this is a match play mission. This isn't narrative, this isn't fluffy. This is, if you are holding a point, you get buffed. This would typically have been considered a much more narrative thing. With a variety of missions available, you may worry that your kill team might not have the right tools on their brand new data cards for the job, but match play has you covered. Instead of selecting your team before deciding the mission, you bring a roster of up to 20 operatives on the table uh, to the table and build your kill team to suit the objectives at hand. Okay, so rosters. Need a hard target cracked, bring the gunner with the melt gun, is assassinating the enemy leader a top priority, make sure the sniper is coming along. So this does imply 
that perhaps killing the enemy leader is still a good thing to do. I kind of feel like it would be for a secondary at that point. We still don't know how command points work or anything like that, but okay, moving along. Now, both you and your opponent get to see which faction the other is bringing before selecting your operatives. This change means that kill teams with multiple unit options, such as the Adeptus Astartes or Tau Hunter Cadres, can play some canny mind games when choosing who to deploy. So, uh, hmm, firstly, first things first, Tau Hunter Cadres. Interesting that they call them out as that, but then they call the Adeptus Astartes Adeptus Astartes instead of Space Marines. I feel like they... Okay, anyway, that's just like... A... Because we already know that Space Marines are, as a faction, called Space Marines, and Adeptus Astartes is just a secondary keyword. Whereas Tau Hunter Cadres presumably are Tau Hunter Cadres, and then there's going to be... You get it. You watched the previous video. You get it. Okay, so this is just uh, a standard. If you play Kill Team, rosters, they exist. Uh, you can put... You could put fake options on the rosters if you want to kind of psych out your enemy. Uh, and then we see a whole load of witches. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's how many witches you get in the box. And so they're just putting 10 on there. Or if Drukavi will actually be, you can take two, two fire teams, but, it will, but they're five each. So they total 10. But the mission decided and the kill team's chosen commanders pick which tack ops they want to try to score for extra VP. Tac Ops are secondary objectives that are generated in secret, forcing your opponent to guess what you're trying to accomplish during the game. So in 40k, if you play secondaries, they are now openly revealed. So you pick them in secret, and then once you've picked them, you tell your opponent, these are my secondaries. When Kill Team first released, you picked them and they were secret until you scored them. But then when Pariah Nexus released, much like in 40k, you picked the secondaries and then you reveal them to your opponent. So it seems that they are going back to hidden secondary, which is an interesting choice above anything else. But let's go. Generally, I would say that an old kill team, um, it was in, in match play, it was obvious what you were going to pick. So the actual requirement to hide your secondaries was a bit eh. Like you knew what your opponent was taking. If they have like some nice varied secondaries, some faction specific secondaries, that kind of thing, then maybe that won't be such such a big deal. Uh, for instance, you may be looking to take out a particular enemy operative from the start. So challenge. Reveal this tack op in the target reveal step of the first turning point. Select one enemy operative and one friendly operative. If that enemy operative is incapacitated by that friendly operative, you score one VP. If you achieve the first condition while that enemy operative is within pen, uh, red of that friendly operative, you score one VP. People had mentioned, oh, shooting aren't pistols and flamers and things that need to be within red of the enemy kind of weak because like six inches, that's not much at all. But perhaps we're going to be having a lot of secondaries that are you need to be within red to to score extra. And so they're, you know, we don't have to, but they are as, as a game mechanic forcing, encouraging us to become, you know, closer. Also notice that there is an entire target reveal step. So I would assume that this kind of assassination style thing is going to be big. If they have an entire step just for target reveal, we're going to see a lot of this, right? Uh, or perhaps you're going to opportunistically rifle through their pockets for vital intel. Rob and Ransack. You can reveal this tack op when an enemy operative is incapacitated by a friendly operative within black of it. And that friendly operative is more than blue from other enemy operatives. Okay, so if you're within one inch of a model, so that means if you're in close combat, when you kill it and you're over three inches away from any other enemy model, you score one VP. At the end of the battle, if you achieve the first condition or and that friendly operative has not been incapacitated, you score one VP. When it says the first condition, you score the one VP. It seems that all of these secondaries are going to have do A, and then if you accomplish A, further condition and then score B. Uh, at the end, uh, yeah, I already read that, didn't I? I don't need to read it again. Uh, if you achieve the first condition, that pretty often you score one VP. So kill somebody, and then even if you stay alive, you get another VP. Imagine your foe's surprise when a particularly nimble operative sprints through their lines and disappears off their kill zone edge for a hefty chunk of victory points. Interesting. Okay. Interloper. After selecting this tack op, secretly select one friendly operative to be your interloper. You must reveal this tack op when your interloper performs the interlope action. 
And interlopers then in action, okay. Remove your interloper from the kill zone and score two VPs. Your interloper can perform the following mission action once. Interlope, one AP. Perform this action while within black of an enemy kill zone edge and more than blue from enemy operatives. Many more tactical choices are ahead of you before the mission gets underway, such as setting up additional barricades and choosing extra equipment for your operatives. Additional barricade? Player placed terrain in match play missions? That's in. Okay. Alright, let's keep going. But you'll have to pick up the Kill Team core book when it arrives for pre-order next month to discover all the juicy new rules. Join us again later this week as we take a look at the narrative campaigns which take your Kill Teams from a ragtag group of raw recruits, comparatively anyway, to hardened veterans over the course of their careers. Now, just to quickly nail down there, note that they have given us the match play first. That's very interesting. Typically, Games Workshop in the past has been very much pushing the narrative, right? It's all about the campaign, it's all about the narrative. Here, they continually to say, they continue to say, finally balanced, here's the match play. I'm just throwing it out there, I don't know, but this seems exactly as I said at the start, read in between the lines. What are they actually telling us? Anybody that is expecting this to be War Cry and it is a 25 minute game, I don't think that's what we're going to get. Yes, they have streamlined some roles perhaps, but it, it feels like, well, I don't know how long this game's going to take. Anyway, that's all I'm saying. Finally balanced, streamlined, match play. Uh, I'm, I'm super curious about the setting up additional barricades, actually. The idea, just the idea of player place terrain within a match play mission sounds really cool. Uh, if, if you want, it's almost an expanding of scouting rules where you could, you know, you could bomb, like you could booby trap a piece of terrain. It's almost like, hey, that's a cool concept, but it wasn't balanced, it wasn't blah blah blah, it could be countered, it was boring. And they said, hey, cool idea, spec ops, so of course we've got like cow trops, we've got, you know, booby traps, trip wires, all this stuff. Let's make it balanced. Let's put it into the game and make it fair. Cool idea. Let's see what they actually do with it, because maybe that was just a throwaway line and, and they didn't mean anything. Uh, it seems that, it, not that this is relevant, but all of these uh, secondaries get you 2, eight, two VP. Uh, the interlope is all or nothing. You get the 2 VP or you get nothing. The others have multiple objectives. Okay, I think that's that done. This is pretty, pretty interesting across the board, considering that a lot of the things we're seeing here, I would argue, like Consecrate Ground, getting buffs for doing an action, that to me is super narrative. Down here, putting in additional barricades, so player place terrain, super narrative. But this is the match play. Very interesting. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say about it now, but uh, this was cool. Uh, what do you guys think? Did you think this was cool? Obviously, I'm a match play guy. Chances are good I'm not going to be playing narrative. That, I mean, I'll, I'll try it, right? But I, I don't lean towards playing a campaign. Unless they throw out a really juicy campaign and the next article really hooks me, I'm going to be playing match play. I'm going to be playing competitive. That's just who I am because I like to be able to play one-off games and that's what match play is. And I always feel like a campaign, that's not one-off games. Also, because I don't really know what's good, so I want to swap my models all the time. Match play is where I'm at. And it's so hard to be able to say what's good and what's bad just for, to sit here and read an article that tells us a little bit gives us a little hint of what's coming i'm no i'm not a game designer all i can say is it's interesting it's different but is it better i don't know it seems better but who knows anyway guys it'd be glass half dead thank you very much for watching to the end of the video uh, if you have watched this far i would like to give you a big triple hello very wholesome i know thank you that's my present to you what do you think about this genuine question are you more excited by the narrative or by the match play i want to know that question so much i'm going to make a poll about that because i'm i never know which way my audience leans uh despite what i talk about i don't know wh what you guys actually care about so please answer but i'm also going to put a poll so check my community tab that'd be awesome if you could thank you very much and then answering that poll and also like the poll don't forget that just answering the poll isn't the same as like you also leave a comment. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a good day and continue to have a good day. Roll on. More Kill Team Octarius news. Goodbye.